Dodge Ram Timing Chain. With the drain hose hooked to the bottom of the drain plug, unscrew your drain plug and let the antifreeze drain out. Using a flathead screwdriver, loosen the clamp that holds the air filter box on. Remove the hose from the valve cover to the air filter box, and then your tube that goes to the air filter box. Remove the air filter box completely. Remove the upper radiator hose clamp. Then remove the upper radiator hose from the radiator. Using your 14 millimeter, remove the two bolts that holds the bracket on from the upper intake to the alternator. Now remove the bracket. radiator hose to the thermostat housing and remove the hose clamp. Little tug and wiggle and you can get the radiator hose off the thermostat housing. Unhook the washer fluid level sensor. Unhook the washer fluid line. And unhook the wiper motor washer fluid harness. With a flathead screwdriver, pry behind the washer reservoir towards the battery and pull straight up. Remove the hose from the radiator to the expansion tank. With a screwdriver behind the expansion tank, pry out, pull up. Using a fan clutch removal tool or a pipe wrench, loosen the nut on your fan. Using your 10 millimeter, remove the two bolts that hold the fan shroud on the passenger side. Then remove the two bolts that are on the driver's side. Going counterclockwise, spin the fan the rest of the way off, pull your fan and fan shroud at the same time. Using the 15 millimeter, release the pressure off the belt tensioner and remove your belt. Remove the hose clamp for the bottom radiator hose. Then remove your hose. Tuck it out of the way. Using your 13 millimeter, remove the bolts and the bracket that hold the AC compressor on. Unplug the harness on the side of the AC compressor. Remove the AC compressor, set it off to the side. Slide the clamp back on the heater hose. Remove the hose from the water pump inlet. Using a 13 millimeter, remove the bolt that holds the inlet into the water pump.
then remove the inlet. Using the 13 millimeter, remove the bolts that hold the dipstick on the side of the accessory bracket. Using your 14 millimeter, remove the idler pulley. Using your 14 millimeter, remove the rest of the bolts holding on the accessory bracket. Remove the accessory bracket along with the alternator. Next, you're going to want to move both hose clamps towards the center of the heater bypass hose. And this hose can be difficult to remove. If it is, just take a razor blade, cut the ends, peel it off, order you a new hose. All right, the bolts that hold the water pump on are a 14 millimeter. So these fine, you sock it, of course, but this top one right here, you see it's got a torqued bit in there. Reason being, you're not gonna get your socket on there. Not gonna happen. You can use a wrench, but use the box in to break it loose. And stop right there and use the open end to take it off because if you use this box in this ratchet like ratchet wrench right here and you get a ratchet on it you're gonna pull it out the, enough out or you ain't gonna be able to get it out ask me how i know that so you can use your box in finish taking it off or you can use the torx bit which is a t50 and that's what i'm gonna use Using my cardboard water pump diagram, I'm going to keep track of where the bolts go back in when we put the new water pump on. Using your 14 millimeter, remove the rest of the bolts. Now you can remove your water pump. 13 millimeter will remove the six bolts and hold the crank pulley on. And we'll follow that with a 31 millimeter holding the harmonic balancer on. Couple pops with a dead blow and the crank pulley is removed. Using a harmonic balancer pulley, we'll remove a harmonic balancer. we can set it off to the side. Using our 15 millimeter, we can remove the bolts to the timing chain cover. Remove the two front bolts from the bottom of the oil pan. Now we can remove our timing chain cover. Using a 16 millimeter, break the bolt loose on the camshaft sprocket. We need to align our timing mark on the camshaft sprocket at 6 o'clock, on the crankshaft sprocket at 12 o'clock. Here's a closer view of that. And now we can start lining our timing marks up before we remove the sprocket and the chain.
take this time to remove your old gasket. Go ahead and remove your bolt to your camshaft sprocket. Now we can remove the timing chain set as one unit. Thirteen millimeter will remove the chain tensioner bracket along with the chain tensioner. With a plastic scraper, remove the remaining material on the mating surface of the engine block. We'll follow that with a scotch bright pad and some brake cleaner. We will install our new chain tensioner bracket along with the chain tensioner. Using a 13 millimeter, we'll torque that to 18 foot pounds. With our timing marks aligned on the camshaft sprocket and on the crankshaft sprocket, we'll install it along with the chain. With a little persuasion with a flathead screwdriver. And we're on. Reinstall the 16 millimeter camshaft bolt finger tight. And torque it to 50 foot pounds. Using a punch and a hammer, drive the old seal out of the timing chain cover. If it's being very difficult, flip it over and cave the side of it in. And then turn it back over and knock it out. There's four areas we gotta clean where the water pump bolts to the front of the timing chain cover where the crankshaft seal sits, the bottom of the timing chain cover where the oil pan gasket meets, the back where the timing chain cover meets against the front of the engine block. We'll get this all cleaned up and ready to install. Place the seal, making sure it's flush with the cover. Now you can use a block of wood or you can use a socket. Now I have a seal driver, I could use that, but I'm gonna show you that it can be done with the socket. Now turn it over and make sure the back of the seal is all the way against the lip on the inside of the timing chain cover. A thin coat of grease on the inside of the seal will keep from damaging it when we slip it over the crankshaft. Pull the chain tensioner pin. We'll take some brake cleaner, spray it on a rag, and clean the making surface one more time. Using motor oil, we'll put a liberal amount of oil on the timing chain and the gears. With a new timing cover gasket held in place by a couple bolts, you can gently 
slip it over the crankshaft without damaging your seal and using a few of them bolts to hold it in place. Using your 15 millimeter, torque them down to 30 foot pounds. We'll follow that with a harmonica balancer. And press it back into place. Reinstall your crankshaft bolt using a 31 millimeter. We'll torque that to 135 foot pounds. Then comes our crank pulley. Reinstall your 13 millimeter bolts. And torque is to 200 inch pounds or 17 foot pounds. Now I'm going to use some gasket maker for water pumps because the paper thin gasket that come with this water pump doesn't look like much. So I'm going to put a thin coat on the water pump, place my gasket down, and then cover it with another thin layer of the gasket maker. Install the water pump with a few 14 millimeter bolts and tighten them down finger tight after applying blue thread locker to all of them. Torque all your bolts down to 30 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. Install your lower radiator hose onto the water pump, followed with the hose clamp, spinning it out of the way so it don't get caught in the fan belt. Next, reinstall the accessory bracket along with the alternator. Reinstall the bolts. Snug them down. Install a new O-ring on the water pump inlet pipe. Followed by a little grease around the O-ring. Install the inlet pipe. Place your bolt. Followed by the heater core hose. And finishing off with your hose clamp. Next, we'll tackle the AC compressor by putting it in place. Followed with the bolts. 
Next comes a bracket. Along with them bolts. And snug them down. We'll secure our old dipstick tube. Reconnect the wires to our AC compressor. Next we'll put on our idler pulley. And finish it up with the fan belt. Now it's time to install the air filter box bracket. Zip the bolts tight. Lower the fan shroud and the fan down as a unit. start threading the fan nut on. Four 10 millimeters that hold the fan shroud on, two on the passenger side, two on the driver side. Snug them up. We'll tighten our fan nut down. And don't worry, once you start the vehicle, the nut will get tighter as it spins. We'll drop our expansion tank back in, followed by hooking the overflow hose up. Next, we'll install our washer fluid tank, connecting the wiring harness, the washer fluid line, and the washer fluid switcher. Install the upper radiator hose onto the thermostat housing. followed with a hose clamp. Hook the upper radiator hose to the radiator and follow that with a hose clamp. With the new air filter box gasket in place, we can install our air filter box. Make sure the air filter box is sealed all the way around. With an eight millimeter, tighten it down. Hook up your inlet tube to the air filter box, followed with the hose that's going down to the valve cover. Fill your vehicle up with 50-50 cool it, crank your truck, and let it idle. As the truck warms up, it'll leak small air bubbles out, but once we see temps between 210 and 212, you'll see a drastic drop in coolant. That happens, you'll know your thermostat opened up.
with a jug of coolant in hand, start pouring as soon as the thermostat opens. Keep pouring until it maintains a steady level in the funnel. Let it idle for another five to 10 minutes. If you don't see any more air bubbles come up, remove the funnel and put your radiator cap on. And that dog will be ready to hunt. Thanks for watching.